Incidentally, tomorrow evening on 2 at 5.40, perhaps the greatest film Tarzan of them all, Johnny Weissmuller, fights the Nazis in Tarzan Triumphs. On BBC One now, the 9 o'clock news will be followed by Tenko as the ordeal for the wartime women prisoners of the Japanese continues unabated. And here on 2 in 45 minutes, you can spend 40 minutes in the company of Sex, Drugs and the Vicar as we go behind the scenes of one of Britain's most famous Sunday newspapers, The Outspoken News of the World, and that's at 9.45, after BBC Two pays tribute to one of the great troopers, as from the stage of the Theatre Royal in Lincoln, the inimitable Eric Sykes looks back on his life and work.
Music. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Spanish. <laughs> the Spanish gypsy dance in F. That's the story of my life. <laughs> so in conclusion, no, I was born. Thank you. I was born of very I was born I was born I was born of very I was born of very Just take me off with you. Switched off! Just take me off! Fine! Switched no, off! It's not! Yes it is! <laughs> oh, what a great team. <laughs> I was born, ladies and gentlemen, of mixed parents. <laughs> one man, one woman. <laughs> and here's a little picture I'd like to show you. This is like the story of my life. Isn't that nice? Didn't have lawn, but we've got carpet. <laughs> you see? And there's a little paddock for the animals. <laughs> Happy wedding day, and what a lovely... What a lovely, happy couple. How the fuck is that you they are? <laughs> so I, found, I, found, I found that picture in, a, in an antique shop and I have it up in my office, but it's a lovely picture, isn't it? <laughs> it better be, I brought it up. <laughs> As you know something, we're very poor. I had no clothes. They couldn't afford to buy me clothes. So I had to lie on the floor. <laughs> and I can remember my mother coming to the door with my father and looking at me and she said, she said, he's got to go out, you know. I mean, we've got to get him something. He's got to go out. I mean, he's 28. <laughs> <laughs> so my father went out and he bought me a cap so I could look out the window. <laughs> Well, my career started before the war, 1935. <laughs> and uh, actually, I visited a holiday camp in Germany. <laughs> I was on a holiday at a place called Baden-Baden, and I met, I met a couple of nice chaps. So one was a fat fella, and um, it was called Herman, if, if I remember right. <laughs> And uh, he used to be a pilot in the First World War, and we were always chasing each other like, you know, it, it was great fun. And the other fellow, there were two of them, I thought it was Charlie Chaplin for a minute, but uh, he'd never heard of Charlie's Ruiz Vassis, uh, so I was okay. Anyway, we got an act going, and uh, we did a little Tyrolese dance for the amateur talent competition at the camp. And here's a picture of us in doing the <laughs> That's me, me on the end, that's Herman in the middle, and uh, I thought, I can never, he, all... <laughs> he was a bit morose, he was writing a romantic novel at that time called Mein Kampf, and, and that was it with the fun in the middle, oh, it was great. Anyway, we didn't win. 
No, we, we didn't win the we didn't win the first prize, and the following morning the holiday camp was burnt to the ground. <laughs> And we, we corresponded for a time, like, you know, my Einer Kleiner Utzenhof, and <laughs> then, of course, the war broke out, and I joined the Air Force. And, um, well, I was in the Air Force for two years, and then the Air Force decided I'd make a better sailor. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, of course, and i have met these lads, and I had a bit of pull in the right places, so I joined the Navy. And here's a picture of me in the Navy. And there we are, you see, just leaving Kiel. <laughs> and that was a picture of my first and chief engineer. He was a marvellous fellow, but he would dress up. <laughs> and that's how, well, it was a quiet war. I had a very quiet war. Well, not a lot of action patrolling the Manchester ship canal. And... Uh, then after the war, we went into a concert party. Well, no, <clears throat> one or two of us, we had instructions and we had to go to South America for a while for, um, for tax reasons. <laughs> and here's a picture of me in my, on my ranch in South America. With, as you can see, we hadn't built the house, but we got the bar up. <laughs> and that's me, that's him, and, and I'm still looking for him. <laughs> Oh, he's a great fella. He had a pal of his and put wire around it. And uh, anyway... <laughs> and uh, then I went with my first engineer to... Uh, to and we opened a cafe uh, called the El... El Ethno Fury, it was called. <laughs> it was a pun on cafe. And here's a picture... <laughs> here's another picture of me and my first engineer. Look, as you can see doing that. See, she was the only one in the cafe who used to applaud every night. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, no, to it, there's a lot of truth bound up in this, and when the war finished, Bill Fraser, you know, the Bill Fraser, Bill Fraser and Snudge, marvellous man, formed a concert party, which was written by Ron Rich, who is now a vicar, and Dennis Norden. And I don't know what happened to Dennis, but... <laughs> He wrote some marvellous stuff, and we did some shows. We did three shows. One was called Bags of Panic, two, It's in the Bag, and the third review was Three Bags Full, which is rather nice writing, and it's true. <laughs> anyway, here's a picture of us. It was, look at it now. You see, there you are. And, now, you're not going to believe this, but we're all fellas. <laughs> there's me and the boots in the end, and, of course... A good act. I came out, Danny LaRue knocked off all the stuff, so that was another career done. <laughs> and uh, in any case, Danny LaRue had the material as well. <laughs> uh, not a lot of people know this, but I'm quite a bit of an engineer, and I used to ride motorcycles and things like that, and I was one of the first riders after the war to go into the first TT race, the Isle of Man after the war. There's a picture. Look at that. And uh, I would have come first, but I fell off in the pits. It was a mistake getting on. And see, the same boots again. <laughs> and uh, there you are, you see. Unfortunately, I'd lost my goggles, but they told me afterwards that they were there all the time. Anyway. <laughs> I just went to look at this. Now, not a lot of people know that I was a ballet dancer at one time. And also, I used to play Richard III parts. <laughs> Richard III! <laughs> On ice. I was in ballet school and I've actually got, it's on record of me in a ballet school who were practicing. <laughs> That's me, and as you can see by that, I was a tall fellow and they had low doors. <laughs> and it would have been, it would have been great. I was about to break forward into, to, uh, I think they're doing Swan Lake, or, or it could have been, uh, uh, cop this one. Um, no, Cop <laughs> Coppelia. And then, 
Well, I didn't speak Russian. <laughs> then over came Nureyev. He defected, came over. He knocked off all that stuff, so that was me again. <laughs> I had to resort to playing cricket for England. And in 1947, we sent a, a team to, to play the West Indies in um, Bradford, I think. <laughs> Here's a picture. Here's a picture of me. Look there. There you are, you see. And the fellow at the back is the one who signed for me. <laughs> and he had to have me back by 11 and nothing sharp. <laughs> you see that lovely off drug and the same boots. <laughs> now people say, do I have a... Do I have a family? Oh, of course I have a family. And I've never... I've always kept them in the background for tax reasons. <laughs> and I'm going to show you a picture of my family now. There they are. <laughs> That's some of the family. The rest of them are over here. And... <laughs> we used to live in that compartment. He was a smoker. <laughs> and then we moved to Clapham. Well, the train did and we went with it. <laughs> I was a young comic. I was a young comic. I got a picture of me as a young comic. There it is. Look at that. <laughs> pathetic, isn't it? Pathetic. <laughs> and I can remember that one of the first jokes I ever did, which was, "Do you like my digs? Yeah, three pounds ten a week, all in, eat out and sleep next door." <laughs> I tell you what, he died a bigger death in those days. <laughs> and, and then I, that's an audition. I was. I was in an audition in Delta. They had theatres all over the place like this. And I was on a bill, first bill, with a, a woman, a man and a woman team. And they were a singing team. Does anybody remember Anne Ziegler and Webster Booth? You know, well, these were the poor, the working man's Anne Ziegler and Webster Booth. Because it's only a number three tour. And I was standing there watching on Monday night. And, and they had to make acts then. Instead of just going on and singing, they made it. And their act was a very cheap cloth of a garden, because all theatres have a garden cloth. And then they had two roses, practical roses, sticking out. And the music started, and she wandered on. Big hat, basket. And she plucks a rose and puts it in the basket like that. And she plucks another one, and he shuffles on like a tramp. <laughs> like that. She turned around to him and she went, Oh! But you haven't always been a tramp. He said, no, once I built a railroad. <laughs> that... <laughs> so I went into a repertory. I went into a repertory, and we have, we have a repertory picture. This is me. <laughs> oh, it's pathetic, isn't it? <laughs> Do anybody remember Ronald Coleman? <laughs> that bit never grew. <laughs> this that bit there. And I used to put a little burnt match on it, but don't tell anybody. And that repertory, and I, I, I had a marvellous time. I learnt a lot, and for I was stage manager as well as um, being one of the actors. And who knows the play of Two Mrs. Carols? Anybody? Yes. No, you see, it's before your time. There was, there was me and Beerbaum Tree. <laughs> and, uh, and we were doing the Two Mrs. Carols, and I was a stage manager. Now, in those days, the stage thing like that, and they had the, the it's, it's a country house in Spain, in, in France. There's a mistral blowing. A mistral lets me, stage man, going, <laughs> and it's thunder and lightning, I have a thunder sheet up there, and the lights are this, and <laughs> bang, bang, bang. And on stage they go, oh, this damn wind. And I'm going, <laughs> and they said, oh, shutters, and I've got the first aid box for the shutter, like, bum, bum, bum. Oh, can't you fix those shutters, man? <laughs> And I'm also playing the maid. <laughs> now, I, I mean, I, I wasn't the maid. I mean, I was, instead of calling me Marie, I was called Alphonse. <laughs> so I had a white jacket on. It was just one of those things. But I'm also in it. And I'm, <laughs> I'm in it. And, and, you know, I'm doing all this like that. And then what I have to do is that the car arrives. So in those days, they had the 78 with all the different effects on it. Nowadays, you press a button and it's there, but not those days. <laughs> so I go, vroom, vroom, bang, bang, oh, those shadows, vroom, vroom, bang. <laughs> and I put it on the wrong place. <laughs> Instead of a car arriving, and 
I think Jesse on stage, he didn't hear it, and he just said, oh, that'll be them now. <laughs> and, and not only that, I had the thing of the boom, 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 and then I went, dong, 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 <laughs> and I went on and answered it. And nobody knew that every time I answered the door, it all went quiet. <laughs> that you seem to make a mark on the, the record. It could have been worse. I could have put the band of the Grenadier Guards on. <laughs> and he would have looked to Jesse. This will be them now. <laughs> I, I went into another rep then and my money went up to nine pounds <laughs> because they were talking about me. <laughs> and we did the shop at Sly Corner. How many, how many know the shop at Sly Corner? Yeah, well, now I played the young lieutenant, the lead. If you can remember that picture, you'll see why. I played the lead. There was one part with the old man, and he was 72 years old. 72. And he sits behind the desk, and his line is, he's got this little thorn, and he says, do you know this thorn is curare? And it kills in 14 seconds. And I have to sort of step forward like that, which I took half a page. Didn't get a round of applause, so I cut it out. But I took half a page. <laughs> and, he get this, and he presses it, and he went, me, 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 he. So I, my next line is, he's dead. <laughs> then there's a curtain. That's the end of the act, you see. So he, he, mm. So I went like that, and he went, mm. <laughs> And he went, mm. Mm. And I got, <laughs> and he says to me then he gets on the floor and I look at the audience and says not yet <laughs> well and it kills him 14 seconds oh it's three minutes of that <laughs> and in the end I just looked at the audience and I said he's dead and of course they laughed he, he was curious he said, oh. <laughs> he said I'll show you 72 years old so the following night he played now can you imagine a 72 year old man playing this young lieutenant in love with his girl and me has to play the old man. Well, there's no way I could do it. I mean, it was like Mr. Crand. Oh, yeah. Oh. And I said to him, I said, got to this part, I said, you see this? See this song? It's curare and it kills in 14 seconds. And I went, mm, I went uh, and he said, get on with it, let me. <laughs> Oh, I fell down completely. I just, I just had one rigor mortis, and that was it. 40, I did it in nine seconds. And it was three minutes after he'd examined me and everything before he said, he's dead. <laughs> and he said, that's how to do it, complete silence. Well, of course, it was complete silence. They're all in the bar then. <laughs> and, oh, one of the first jobs. This is in the Bill Fraser, Dennis Norton era. I was with a four-part harmony team true and we called ourselves the four aces and it's a cheek it's a cheek because there was a great group going around called the four aces and this is the number i love coffee i love tea i love the java java and it loves me coffee. it is Curly. it is i haven't seen you since hamburg that's do you right. remember that? I do. I do. Oh, my jingle. You were going to open a chemist shop in the Reaper band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, come here. Oh, no, this is amazing. Go on up. I, I love coffee. coffee I, I love tea. tea. I, I love the Java Java and it loves me. Jim Jim! Sapper Sykes. I, that's right. I, my jingle. The water car corporal. Was that? That's right. And look out the CO. Would you now if you wrote this you wouldn't believe it. These <laughs> are you have changed. Because when I knew them they were black, weren't you? Oh absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Done well. How are you? Sir? I'm fine, thank you. Nice to see you. Again. Nice to see you, Lieutenant Jampton. Right now, this is what we're gonna do. This so now wait a minute. Wait a minute. I wanna hear this myself. Okay. <laughs> 
That's all right. I want to see where his fingers go. <laughs> I love coffee. I love tea. I love the Java Jive and it loves me. Coffee and tea and the Java and me. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup. Boy. I love Java sweet and hot. Whoops, Mr. Moto, I'm a coffee pop. Shoot me the pop now, pour me a shot. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup. Oh, slim little slug from the wonderful mug. I got a rug that's snug in a jug. A slice of onion and a raw one. Draw one. I love the Java Java and it loves me. Coffee and tea and the Java and me. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup. Ooh. Boston beans, soy beans, green beans, cabbage and greens. I'm not keen on butter beans unless it is a cheery, cheery bean. Boy. I love coffee, I love tea I love the java java and it loves me Coffee and tea and the java and me A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup Coffee and tea and the java and me A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup. Oh. Thank you. Then, after that, we decided to tour. So, so we took the road, and he and those, and... <coughs> Excuse me. There's yours. Right. No, no, you had a pie. I had a pie. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. A radio, okay? Educating Arts, you remember that? And Frank, oh yeah, I remember it too. Lovely stuff. Working for a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> and in the, then it was television. And the old, old days, and a lot, a lot of people don't know, but in the old days, there were nine inch sets. That's all they had. Anybody have a nine inch set? That me. And in front of it, they had that sort of thick pebble glass. You know, <laughs> it, was, it was a bit like Michael Foot's head on the sideboard. <laughs> My aunt, my aunt, my aunt Mary, she had the first set in Preston. She lived just outside Preston. She had the first one, and there were only two in that place, and the dealer had the other one. She had this one. And I travelled up from London just to look at it. And was sitting in, and in those days, you didn't sit back like this and, and watch it. You all watch it <laughs> like that. And there's 20 of us in this little room, and we're watching it. And the picture came from Birmingham, the signal. And it kept fading. See, and every time it faded, everybody goes like that. <laughs> and they go back again. And then... <laughs> it's like a Wakefield Trinity scrum. <laughs> and what they did, they they give you instructions on how to view. They did, they said, don't look at it all the time, because it will ruin your eyes. So they said, every so often, keep looking at an object in a corner of the room. <laughs> It's true. So you had to sit there watching like that, and every so often you went. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you wouldn't go blind, you know. <laughs> and a lot of snobs in those days, there's a lot of snobs who used to walk through the streets, walking the street going. <laughs> 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 it's 
so that people would think they had a set. <laughs> and you know, all the blinds were drawn, you, you didn't know whether somebody was dead or whether they had a set. But <laughs> good morning. <laughs> anyway, one of the early television shows I did was in a show with Harry Seacom, and he wasn't, uh, he wasn't a night then, he wasn't even a full morning. <laughs> and, in those days... Oh, I slipped up on you. In those days, they were live, and if you made a mistake, you didn't. And I'm doing um, a, a little thing here, which we made up, actually, on the day. And I wonder if you recognise the other fellow that we do this little act. Here it is. A snap of the fingers. There it is. I've got a part in the opera. I'm a gypsy. I have gypsy. I have gypsy am I. I sat me down, follow me. I travelling by, I follow the road, who cares, who the hell can... Spike Milligan, and we've been together ever since. But most of my, uh, my, my career, as you know, has been taken up with doing the, the, the Sykes television shows. And I'd like to do this small session as a tribute to Hattie Jakes and Richard Watties and, and the people that I've spent a third of my life, when you think, that over 20 years. And uh, also, we were responsible for the first <coughs> frontal nudity on television. <laughs> I'm sorry to have to say it, unfortunately it was in black and white, but here's the first frontal nudity on television. Well, that's Capo Floor at dawn. <laughs> Orphan with the bone defenses. <laughs> Let go forward. Let go out. Meanwhile, in a fjord... Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I don't... <coughs> <laughs> Most of the, my television um, things are based on fact and, and actual happenings. But I put in this show, we did a show with Raymond Huntley, you know, the actor, hello, hello, and we did a, a show, and I was supposed to be the producer of that show. And in it, he's talking, he said, like, Arabella, I have to go to India, Arabella, and he looked, and he came, and he said, Eric, dear boy, he said, do we need this table? <laughs> so I nipped up on set, and I said, pardon? <laughs> He said, do we need that table? I said, no, I'll, I'll ask the stage manager. I said, do we need that table? And the stage manager came on. He said, well, what table? <laughs> and I said, well, that table. They said, just a minute. He said, I'll ask the props. He said, props? And the prop came in. He said, what's the problem? He said, does he need that table? He said, well, it's on the prop list. He said, so he turned to me and he said, it's on the prop list. I said, well, it's on the prop list. So he said, all right, we'll leave it there. I said, thank you very much. He said, thank you. 
Uh, okay, let's carry on. And he said, just a moment. He said, what's all this business? <laughs> I said, well, you started it. <laughs> He said, I was merely shielding my eyes from the glare of the footlights. I said, oh, I thought you were a mason. <laughs> All happened. Also, based on truth, Hattie, Jakes and I used to do quite a few police concerts. And when you do them, they give you, like at the end, like a, a, a truncheon with a sign or something like that. And what they call handcuffs, which are inscribed. They're not regulation, they're nice things, and uh, thank you from F Division or whatever it is. Well, she took them home, and she, so one of her sons at that time was six years old, playing around with them, and he's caught in these handcuffs. <laughs> now, they don't have keys for these handcuffs. And Hat has to go to a rehearsal, so she phoned up a pal of hers, an actor, and she said, Look, he's stuck like this, would you take him to the police station and <laughs> get him off? She said, Right, oh. He's got this six year old boy, handcuffed. <laughs> And this fellow's walking with you. Come on, lad. <laughs> and the crowd are all saying, Come on, leave him alone. Let him go. <laughs> and that's an act that's happening. And I wrote a show which, which incorporated Hat and I getting caught in these handcuffs. Here's a little scene where we're handcuffed together. Look, I'll tell you what we'll do. As soon as we've eaten, I'll take you down to the police station, OK? All right, then. Right, then. Uh-huh. Now, that's a snag. There's a snag here. Just a minute. Sit here. Right? Oh. Eric! If you sat at that end of the table, I could eat my dinner. Well, yeah, I know. Well, we're not finished. We'll go without. It's just as long as long, isn't it? Wait a minute. Get that plate. Get that plate. Get that plate. Put it there. There we are. Okay. Yeah, good enough. Come on, Phil. I don't have you done. Are you quite all right now? Are you? I'm not going to grumble, I did get a bit. <laughs> now then, come on, let's get some. Good arm, Pat. What? I'll tell you what we'll do. Now, we're, let's pretend we're one person, right? <laughs> Just got one pair of hands. Go on. Right, come on out. There we are. Good. <laughs> Is it okay? Right, now, don't forget the other one. Now, don't forget the other one. Get a bit of bacon. That's it. Get a little mushroom. Get a little mushroom. That's the one. Ah, ah, ah. I'll enjoy this myself, I don't know about you. And uh, it's cold outside, so it might as well be here. And uh, Hat has helped a lot of people to, to get on. We, we've had a lot of celebrities in the show, and we had one. A young golfer came to us, and Hat, who'd never had a lesson, well, she didn't know anything at all about golf. I took her out to a golf course once, and she saw all the flags on the greens, and she thought it was Empire Day. <laughs> But in one of the shows, we had a man, a young fella, Tony Jacklin, giving an exhibition. This is also Richard Wattis. Stand by, caddies! Mr. Jacklin is about to drive! Look, don't push so far forward. Do please stand <laughs> by. I'll see that you see everything. <laughs> Mr. Jacklin is all teed up, as you can see. He's now addressing the ball. Just take one look at his feet. Look, it's fabulous. Look at that left foot. Look where that right foot is. He's now at the address. Uh, no, no, no. Something's disturbed him. He's coming up. <laughs> He's just said... <laughs> But 
what about how, what she was? We we've been over the world, Hat and I. We we did a show together and Hong Kong and, and all over the world. And everywhere we went, we did a lot of deep sea fishing. And Hat was always the best. She always caught the biggest fish and a great sailor. So once we were doing a season in Torquay, we we took a boat out every Friday and went fishing because we only had one house on Friday and went fishing. So whilst we were there, we made a film, a fishing film, and I'd just like to see what a lovely lady had to. Our phone! It's coming, Eric, it's coming! I think it is. No. I think it's an octopus. <laughs> <laughs> we've, got a, we've got an octopus. Captain, we've got Captain. an octopus down there looking up. Let us. me have a look. Let me have a look. Great jumping jellyfish. It's a mine. Don't let it go, whatever you do. Keep it away from the side of the ship. Don't let it touch the side. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, don't worry. I know about these things. <laughs> oh, yes, you know about them. You thought it was an octopus with short arms. <laughs> It's the war. Oh, well, it's, it's all right, Eric. It could be one of ours. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether it's one of ours or whether it's a German mind, does it? Bang is the same in any language. Captain's <laughs> Ciao. I'm coming, Mother. What I meant to say was being there so long, it's probably a dud. See what the captain thinks. I don't think the captain thinks it is a dad, Eric. Hey. No. <laughs> he says he's going to get help. You better be quick, because I can't hold it much longer. Oh, well, just let it go, Eric. You don't want it. <laughs> now, if I let it go and it hits bottom, it could blow this boat to smithereens. That's not our fault, is it? <laughs> now, another one. See, a lot of people have been on our shows. Uh, well, as I said, we've done it for 20 years. And uh, the most brilliant, a genius in the world, the late Peter Sellers, who at the time was, was uh, the highest paid man. And I phoned him up. I said, oh, will you do one of my TV shows? He said, sure. Now, and we're going to show Peter Sellers doing this one of our shows. Oh, you've got no more worries, because once Tommy Grando sees you in that, he'll be out like a shot. If he is, and I will be. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the kitchen. We are in love with you. <laughs> and Mr. Grando, this is, this is my sister-in-law, Harriet. Hi. And who is this gentleman? Grando. Tommy Grando. You little Harriet, are you? Little Harriet? <coughs> Let's have a look at you. <laughs> yeah, you're lovely, aren't you? <laughs> hey? You're just the sort of bird I've been looking for. You're sort of, uh, sort of different, aren't you? Yeah, I'm different, all right. I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to marry you, because I never break the promise, you see. It's all right. Oh, no, well, I don't think Eric... Well, Eric's got to give his consent, you see, because uh, he's a guardian. <laughs> If it hadn't been for Britt Eklund, we might have run away together. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's about, uh, that's some of the resume of my life. I hope I paid the tribute. I can't say enough about Hat, Richard Rottis and uh, all the people. And thank you for letting me come along and let my hair down. And uh, would you like a song before we go, another one? <laughs> go for it, then. <laughs> right then, enough. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the key you like? <laughs>
Every star above knows the one I love. Sweet Sue, sweet Sue. And that moon on high knows the reason why. Sweet Sue, just you. No one else it seems ever shares my dreams. And without you, dear, I don't know what I'd do. In this heart of mine, you live all the time. Sweet Sue, just you. No one else can see Ever shares my dream And without you dear I don't know What I do Not a lamb, honey child Just you Do what, do what, do what, Every star above knows the one I love. Sweet Sue, sweet Sue. And the moon on high knows the reason why. Sweet Sue, just you. No one else it seems ever shares my dreams. I'm without you, dear. the news of the world gets its stories and exposés is the subject matter of tonight's 40 minutes documentary in just a moment or two. General! Haunting childhood memories are recalled in tomorrow's playhouse, findings on a late afternoon. Gerald cannot come to terms with the mistakes and confusions of his past and he is nearing a complete breakdown. General! 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 Father, it is all right for you. You have never had to work in an office. Thank you. But I have to. Ingredients of a life. What? You said I've got the ingredients of a life. When? When you gave up music. Oh, Father. On expression to use. What will he make of them, I thought. My life's all right. I up, aren't you? Hell of a view if you can stand it. I couldn't stand it. I don't mind the view. But Gerald discovers that the view becomes much clearer. That's Playhouse tomorrow at half past nine. Tonight continues now on two with 40 minutes of sex, drugs and the vicar. <laughs> 